This is Johnny Cerucci with another MIGMAG special report. Whenever anyone anywhere wants to hit you with shock value over evil, they reference Adolf Hitler, the Nazis, the Third Reich, and even Germany. Notice how anybody and everybody is now Hitler. Have you noticed that? They called Obama Hitler. They called Trump Hitler. They called Bush Hitler. But what you don't know is how Hitler and the Nazis were created and enabled by a surprising source. Prior to 1517, the world was owned politically, militarily, and spiritually by Rome. But not the old Roman Empire, the new Holy Roman Empire. It wasn't the Caesar that gave orders, but the Pontifex Maximus, the Vicar of Christ on Earth. Whenever anyone attempted to rebel against the authority of the popes, especially if they attempted to use the Bible as their defense, they were brutally and mercilessly crushed. No entity has killed and tortured more of God's people than Rome. She truly is the great harlot of Revelation 17. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her sins. So he carried me away in the spirit to the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones, and pearls having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations, and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Her terrible crimes have been erased by her henchmen. Few have heard of John Fox's Acts and Monuments, which was later renamed to John Fox's Book of Martyrs. The Roman Catholic Crusades against Jews and Muslims have been rewritten to become Christian Crusades and completely erased from history are the Roman Catholic Crusades against Christians, like that initiated from Lotario de Conti de Segni, Pope Innocent III, who started a brutal and vicious war against the fundamentalist Albigenses and Waldenses in southern France and northern Italy. Crusader knights painted the Alps with their blood, mercilessly slaughtering men, women, and children because they refused to bow to Rome. But the tide was turned by the efforts of an Augustinian monk named Martin Luther and the advent of the movable type printing press. Rebellion against the tyranny of the Holy Roman Empire spread like wildfire, while the writings of protesters like Luther, Calvin, Zwingli, Knox, and Wycliffe, as well as their Bibles written in the common tongue, were now being too rapidly printed and disseminated for the fires of the Inquisition to keep up. The great harlot was furious at both Martin Luther and his homeland of Germany. As the saying goes, Rome neither forgives nor forgets. As I stated in my book, Illuminati Unmasked, page 98, in a series of policies enacted between 1871 to 1878, known as Culture Kampf, or Cultural Struggle, Otto von Bismarck expelled the Jesuits from Prussia and Germany and did all he could to mitigate interference in German affairs by the Vatican. These slights put Germany in the crosshairs of the most dangerous people on earth, the Jesuits. The Third Reich cunningly hid behind their favorite scapegoats, the Jews, whose chastisement was prolonged by papal puppets like 33-degree Freemason Franklin Roosevelt, who returned fleeing Jewish refugees back to Europe and kept rail lines sending Jews to their deaths free from bombardment. The anonymous Jewish author of the book Revolution, Britain's Peril and Her Secret Foes, wrote in 1883, the falsehoods and slanders invented by the Jesuits to excite the hatred of the continent against us and their special efforts to inflame Germany with the hatred which is their particular weapon for the destruction of their opponents was the cause of the First World War. Kaiser Wilhelm II wrote in his memoirs on page 221, 
Pope Pius X said to me on this occasion that Germany must become the sword of the Catholic Church. I remarked to him that the old Roman Empire of the German nation no longer existed, but he stuck to his words. The great harlot of Babylon would not be dissuaded in both using and abusing the birthplace of Martin Luther and of the Reformation. Shortly after Martin Luther's Reformation of 1517, Rome's shock troops, the Dominicans, were replaced by an even more ruthless order, the Jesuits of Ignatius Loyola. As Ellen Gould White stated in her book, The Great Controversy in 1888, throughout Christendom, Protestantism was menaced by formidable foes. The first triumphs of the Reformation passed, Rome summoned new forces, hoping to accomplish its destruction. At this time, the Order of the Jesuits was created, the most cruel, unscrupulous, and powerful of all the champions of popery. Cut off from earthly ties and human interests, dead to the claims of natural affection, reason, and conscience, wholly silenced, they knew no rule, no tie, but that of their order, and no duty but to extend its power. The gospel of Christ had enabled its adherents to meet danger and end newer suffering. Undismayed by cold, hunger, toil, and poverty to uphold the banner of truth in the face of the rack, the dungeon, and the stake. To combat these foes, Jesuitism inspired its followers with a fanaticism that enabled them to endure like dangers and to oppose to the power of truth all the weapons of deception. There was no crime too great for them to commit, no deception too base for them to practice, no disguise too difficult for them to assume. Vowed to perpetual poverty and humility, it was their studied aim to secure wealth and power, to be devoted to the overthrow of Protestantism and the re-establishment of papal supremacy. In 1915, the Polish-born superior general of the inversely named Society of Jesus was Wladimir Ledekowski. In the best Hegelian dialectic, Ledekowski carefully manipulated the creation of both Soviet communism in Russia and the Third Reich in Germany. The Jesuits trained their agents to perfection, men like Eugenio Maria Giuseppe Giovanni Pacelli. Pacelli would rise through priest, archbishop, and cardinal, holding the key positions of apostolic nuncio, which is the ambassador from the Vatican, to both Prussia and Germany in the critical years leading up to World War II. Powerful Catholic aristocrat Franz von Papen personally saw to the military dissolution of the Reichstag in 1932 and the subsequent empowerment and election of Adolf Hitler. A few years later, Robert de Harcourt of the French Academy would later quote Franz von Papen as having said, The Third Reich is the first world power which not only acknowledges, but also puts into practice the high principles of the papacy. Adolf Hitler was the perfect puppet, easily manipulated, born out of wedlock and in a broken family, and possibly with the added humiliation of being sired by a Jewish shopkeeper. He was carefully trained and aimed at Rome's favorite scapegoats for Germany's terrible living conditions and the needless hyperinflation of the Weimar Republic, where Rome's knights devalued the Deutschmark until it was worthless. Again, quoting from Illuminati Unmasked, starting on page 96, the worst political plagues of modernity, from Nazism to communism, were birthed by the Society of Jesus. I cite Emanuel Josephson's The Federal Reserve Conspiracy and Rockefellers, their gold standard. Wherever a totalitarian movement erupts, whether communist or Nazi, a Jesuit can be found in the role of advisor or leader. Again from Illuminati Unmasked, Adolf Hitler's tour de force Mein Kampf was so heavily edited by a vehemently anti-Semitic Jesuit priest, Bernard Stempfel, that it was practically ghostwritten by him. An impeccable source for this is Otto Strasser. Strasser was a key figure in the Nazi party of the 1930s. During Adolf Hitler's brief stint in prison, Strasser's brother Gregor shared rulership of the party with Gottfried Feder. In his book, Hitler and I, Strasser would write an expose disclosing how Mein Kampf was a chaotic mess of rants completely reorganized by Jesuit father Bernard Stempfel. Stempfel cut his teeth 
railing against the Jews in his magazine, Meisbacher and Sieger. In his book, Hitler Speaks, reformed Nazi Hermann Röschning stated that Hitler drew his inspiration for order and regime from both the Jesuits and the Vatican. The Jesuits then used their Freemasonic friends in banking and international business to help things along. Men like vehement anti-Semite Henry Ford would place the Ford Verka cooperative completely at the disposal of the Wehrmacht for weapons production. Simultaneously, Ford built the Garkovsky Avtomobilny Zavod truck plant in Gorky to fuel the Soviet side of the conflict. The gas truck factory still exists to this very day. Other key figures in working both sides of the war were Shriner Freemason Franklin Delano Roosevelt's ambassador to the Soviet Union, Avril Harriman, Skull and Bones, 1913, and Prescott Bush, Skull and Bones, 1917. As Professor Webster Tarpley wrote in George Bush, The Unauthorized Biography, the grandfather of President George Walker Bush, Skull and Bones, 68, was Prescott Bush, Skull and Bones, 17, and his great-grandfather was George Herbert Walker. Prescott Bush and George Herbert Walker were directors of the London-affiliated New York banking house of Brown Brothers Harriman and its various fronts which funded and directed the military-industrial complex behind Hitler and the Nazi Revolution. In 1919, George Herbert Walker had organized W.A. Harriman and Company, which merged with the British Brown Brothers in 1931. In 1924, Avril Harriman, Skull and Bones, 1913, and Fritz Thiessen, the German industrialist who began funding Hitler in 1923, set up the Union Banking Corporation in New York to handle funds supplied to it through Thiessen's Dutch Bank for American investment. Prescott Bush, who had been an officer of W.A. Harriman since 1926, was a director of the Union Banking Corp. from 1934 to 1943. What Professor Tarpley neglects to mention, however, was that Friedrich Fritz Thiessen was a Roman Catholic Knight of Malta, and George Herbert Walker was educated by the Jesuits at Stonyhurst College, a Jesuit boarding school in Lancashire, England. Perhaps when you receive your education in Turin, Italy, an American Catholic university, as Professor Tarpley has done, these things seem unimportant. The epitome of Nazi evil was the German secret police, the Schutzstaffel, or SS, overseen by Reichsführer Heinrich Himmler. Himmler's family came from the heart of the Jesuit stronghold in Bavaria. In 1919, at the age of 19, Himmler decided to become a Jesuit priest, enrolling in the Munich Technische Hochschule. It was at this time that Himmler, through his influential Catholic family, came in close contact with Archbishop Eugenio Pacelli, the papal nuncio in Munich. Pacelli himself would rise to the papacy and become Pope Pius XII, reigning from 1939 all the way through to 1958. So intimately intertwined with the Third Reich, Pacelli's nickname has been Hitler's Pope. Quite the reverse is true. Hitler was Pacelli's puppet. The true past of Heinrich Himmler has been completely erased. Although he was ordained a Jesuit priest no later than 1925, he is invisible to history until becoming the deputy of Nazi party commander Erhard Haydn. Perhaps his ordination as a Jesuit priest is the reason he was erased from history. Historian Walter Schellenberg stated, The SS organization had been constituted by Himmler according to the principles of the Jesuit order. Their regulations and their spiritual exercises prescribed by Ignatius of Loyola were the model Himmler tried to copy exactly. The Reichsführer SS, Himmler's title as Supreme Chief of the SS, was to be the equivalent of the Jesuits' general, and the whole structure of direction was a close imitation of the Catholic Church's hierarchical order. A medieval castle near Paderborn in Westphalia and called Webelsburg was restored it became what could be called an SS monastery. Edmund Paris wrote in his book, The Vatican Against Europe, the SS had been organized by Himmler according to the principles of the Jesuit order, the rules of the service and spiritual exercises prescribed by Ignatius de Loyola, constituted a model which Himmler strove carefully to copy. Absolute obedience was the supreme rule. Every order had to be executed without comment. Edmund Paris wrote in The Secret History of the Jesuits, Hitler did not award the palm of Jesuitism to his chief of propaganda, though to the Gestapo's chief as he told his favorites, I can see Himmler as our Ignatius of Loyola. 
after millions upon millions of human beings were wounded, scarred, and killed needlessly in the Second World War, Hitler and the Third Reich were ordered to give the ultimate betrayal of Germany and collapse mostly into the hands of the brutal and merciless Soviet Union headed by Josip Druzhkashvili, better known as Joseph Stalin. Stalin's brutality matched that of Heinrich Himmler because he too had trained as a Jesuit priest at the supposedly orthodox seminary in Tiflis, Georgia. Perhaps the worst crime of all was Rome's ability to erase her bloody fingerprints. She used Jesuit masterminds like Edmund Walsh to oversee the translated records at Nuremberg and Rome's famed Vatican rat lines carefully secreted out her most vicious and brutal Nazi puppets so many of whom were embedded in United States government agencies by papal knights in America, such as Roman Catholic Knight of Malta William Donovan, the founder of the OSS, that America has been ruefully called by some researchers as the Fourth Reich. And just as ruthlessly, the great whore of Babylon has been riding America as she has ridden Germany, fully intending to implode the United States, just as she did the homeland of the Protestant Reformation. I'm Johnny Cerucci, and this has been a MIGMAG Special Report.